it's time for the sandbox news. This week, we have Surf, the ultimate surf game. We also have a new platformer game, Terry's Ultimate Platformer. There's some new clothes, and entities in the level editor have gotten a complete rework. This is crazy. There are three new clothing pieces. There's gloves, a necklace, and this curly red hair. Facebunch has made a new surf game. So this is called Strafe. I haven't read the description, but I saw who made it and I saw the name. It's definitely surf. So this is the default map. As you would expect, it's, it's surf. So it's surf and bunny hop combined. Wait. Something feels a little off here. Oh, it looks like there's also boost ramps. When you touch it, you go flying forward and it gives you a ton of speed. It looks like this default map, it doesn't have anything in it. It's just a testing playground, but you can bunny hop and surf around. I wonder, are there any other maps? Nobody's made or ported a full surf map yet. I've switched the map to construct, so we have more space to play around. And it looks like this is an exact one-to-one -one recreation of Source Engine surfing. So if you've ever surfed in a game like Team Fortress or Counter-Strike, or even Gary's Mod or Half-Life 2, it's all the exact same. This goes for B-Hop as well. So really, Surf and B-Hop are pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference between a Surf and B-Hop game mode is the map. So we can see I started to gain a little speed. We can see I'm over a thousand units per second now. I'm going pretty fast. I'm not the best Surf B-Hopper. So let's see how long I can let, oh, I crashed. Oh well. I know Surf and B-Hop is a very popular game mode. So I think a lot of people will appreciate this. I'll probably even make a map for it. There's another game too. This one is tough. Terry's Ultimate Platformer. It's a third person platformer game. You can jump around, you can double jump, and you have to go and collect all the coins and make your way across the obstacle course. There are a couple special abilities. So of course you have the double jump. You can pick up crates and you can throw them. And you can also slide. And if you slide and do a jump, you can do a slide jump and go really far. Now there's some clipping issues on the character's shirt and I'm gonna swap it out real quick. It's really bothering me. Okay, this shirt's a little thicker so it doesn't have clipping issues. There's also a high jump. So if I crouch and then I jump, I'll jump really high. You can actually bypass a big chunk of the level here by doing it. But of course you won't get any of the coins. If you chain all these jumps together, you can go really far. There's also a ground stomp. If I jump up and then I hold crouch, I'll do like a ground pound and it'll actually break any crates that you land next to. So very powerful maneuver. This map is a big playground to test all the mechanics and it's pretty interesting, it's pretty fun. There's also these metal wires, which I believe you can grind on. I haven't tried it yet. This is gonna be my first try. Oh, yep, here we go. And if I, oh, interesting, very interesting. So it looks like uh, it's still a work in progress. It doesn't kick you off automatically if you don't jump off at the end. Can you, oh, you slide off here. So this is like a surf ramp. So if I go down the slope and I hold crouch, I'll go down really fast and then I'll gain a bunch of speed. I can see with some clever level design, this game could be re really exciting. And maybe some bug fixes. Huh? Oh, looks like my cheesecake is done. I'm making a cheesecake to bring to my mom's for Easter. Anyways, uh, the new entity tool has been implemented. So as we can see on the left here, there's a big list of all the entities that I can place down in my map. And I don't have all these games installed. We can see the default entities, entities from Fort Wars, and entities from DM98. And I don't have DM98 installed. Instead, just the entities are installed using this new tool. So I can search for a game that I want to support. I think I want to add TTT support to my map here. So I'll search TTT and click OK. And then it'll download all the entities from TTT and they'll appear in my entity list here. So now if I wanted to, I could go around my map and I could place different TTT entities. For example, this is the spawn point for a random TTT weapon. Now, I'm not going to add TTT support to this map yet, but if I wanted to, I could go around my map and add TTT spawn. So the map we're looking at is my stockyard map for DM98. It's a recreation of the Half-Life 1 map of the same name. Now, it's still a work in progress. As you can see, I've done most of the interiors, but I haven't really started on the exteriors yet. So here's what this area looked like in Half-Life 1, and here's what it looks like in my new updated sandbox version. So as you can see, it's slightly more realistic. This is still uh, early work in progress, and it's just a fast lighting compile. 
So as you can see, the lighting is glitched out a little in some spots, but so far it's very cool, very realistic. I like the wooden beams and the holes here. In Half-Life 1, it was just a weird air duct that went straight down. I've used this new tool to update my Metro map to support Team Fortress Source 2. So I've added support for capture the flag mode. So we can see I've captured the intelligence. Um, I'm not really sure why you would ever want to play Team Fortress 2 on this map though, it's very tight. And the players actually don't even fit inside the trains most of the time. So Team Fortress 2 players actually have a bigger hitbox than normal. As you can see, their hitbox doesn't allow them to walk through this train. So I'll have to make the doorways here even bigger to properly support this. But this is a very cool thing that we can do. Speaking of dropping the intelligence, remember the sandbox editor can support add-ons? Well, we have a fine example of an add-on. So up here, we can see I have a Quixel plugin installed. So this was created by Alex Instant Gib, and it's, it's very useful. It's actually so useful, I can't even believe it. So what this does is it allows me to take assets from Quixel and directly import them to Sandbox. So previously, if I wanted to use, for example, this rock in Sandbox, it would take me like five minutes to download and import this. But now we can see it's as easy as clicking download and then clicking export. If we go into Sandbox, we can see the hand truck model that I just downloaded is already in the game and it's already set up properly. It's fully set up a sandbox model with basic physics collisions too. This is going to save hours of work, especially on maps like this, which is almost entirely Quixel assets. Now do keep in mind, Quixel is not free. Quixel is such a deal. You get so much value out of your money for this. You're paying pennies for each asset that you download. It's crazy. And they have such a huge selection. Well, that was a great example of a tools plugin for Sandbox. Now keep in mind, this is a community made mod. It's not affiliated with Facepunch or Quixel at all. Well, that's it. That's all the Sandbox news. Like, comment, subscribe, and come back next week for more. I'm a punch.